hospitable place I've ever been in my about life. Filipino hospitality. It, it never ceases to amaze me and how friendly the Filipino people are. Um, it just, every day that I would get up and travel around different little places in the Philippines, I always had a story. I always had something that just kind of took me by surprise at how nice people were. So I'd always seen this place on the map that I wanted to go, and it's called uh, Bajan. It's spelled like Badian, but the locals say, tell me that it's pronounced Bajan. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and there's not much there. There is a wellness resort there, um, kind of high-end resort, but really it's a pretty small little island. Um, not very many people go there. Um, in fact, I think the day that I was there I was probably the only foreigner on the island other than people staying on that, um, that resort. The people that stay on the resort, they really don't go off the resort. It's kind of an all-inclusive place. So I'd seen this place on the map, and one day I just decided to go there. And I'd heard that during low tide that sometimes the local um, Filipinos can walk across. So I said, you know, what the hell, I wanna try it. So I had gone and uh, taken pictures of it and looked at it from, you know, up in the mountains. And I said, I, you know, today's the day. So I get up <laughs> and I just go eat some breakfast. I drive towards uh, Bad John Island. Um, and lo and behold, it was low tide. You know, it was early morning, it was low tide. And I parked the motorcycle and there is a guard standing there at a little booth. And I think this is where the ferry comes to get people to transport them to that wellness resort. And it was low tide, the ferry was not running at the time. And I didn't want to take it anyway. I wanted to walk across. And it's probably less than half a mile. Um, and so I tell the uh, guard, you know, I ask him if it's okay to leave my motorcycle there. I think I gave him like 100 pesos just to watch it for me or something, you know, a couple of bucks. And he says, you're going to walk across? He says, hi, you know, uh, are you staying at the resort? And I said, no, I'm, I just want to walk across to the island. And he, he looks at me like I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> so... I said, yeah, is that okay? Um, is, that a, is, that, is there a problem? Is there, can I go there? Um, he says, do you know anyone on the island? I said, no, I don't know anyone. He said, well, why are you going there? And I said, I just, I want to explore. And I was like, uh, is that okay? He says, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's okay. It's, uh, but, you know, um, be careful if you walk across. You know, lots of uh, coral, sharp things in the water. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll be careful. So he kind of points towards the, the direction that I can start walking. And so I'm like, you know, what the hell? I got a bottle of water with me. I got a rain jacket. Not much money, probably a thousand pesos, about 20 bucks. I knew if I got to the other side... Um, That'd be probably a sorry, sorry store, a little convenience store where I could buy, uh, you know, something to eat or drink. And so I said, you know, what the hell, let's go. So I start walking across and it's, it's muddy. It's not like walking on a sandy beach or anything. There's corals I'm walking over. Things start poking through my shoes. And about halfway across, I'm like, man, um, I hope I'm not really being stupid here. And I see some locals out there, they're um, harvesting sea urchins. And you know, the water's about ankle deep at this point, you know, but it's, I can see it slowly starting to rise. And as I'm walking across, I'm seeing, you know, certain people are starting to go back to the shore because the water's starting to rise. And um, they're out there collecting their urchins and stuff. And I walk past a lady and she's very friendly and she looks at me like I'm an alien. She says, what, sir, sir, what, what, what are you doing? I said, I'm walking to the island. She says, wow, do you know anyone on the island? I said, no, um, I just, I want to explore. And, and I think she says, uh, oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, 
hinai hinai, you know, which means slowly, slowly, be careful. I think she says amping, amping, which means, uh, you know, be careful. Very friendly lady. Um, so I keep walking and I'm stepping over. I'm kind of watching where I'm stepping and just trying to be very careful. <laughs> I get coral start to poke through my shoes and I'm like, oh, I hope I'm I'm not being a real idiot here. But, you know, if the locals can get out here, I can, I can do it too. Um, you know, no worries. So I finally get across, um, you know, uh, my feet are a little... A little sore from stepping on a couple of pieces of coral that poked through my shoes. Uh, my foot's kind of, you know, bleeding and uh, not bad. And I'm like, okay, so I finally get over to the island and it's beautiful. Um, as I look back, I start seeing the water. You know, the water is rising. I kind of sit there and drink a little water and, um, you know, walk up onto the, uh, the island and there's really no one around. I see this little path. I don't even know where I'm going. I know that on one side of the island I had seen, um, you know, some buildings and some houses. And the side that I'm on looks completely uninhabited. So I walk through this pasture, through kind of grass, and uh, happen upon this little path. And I'm like, okay, there's a little little uh, footpath here. So I just start walking down the path, and I'm passing... Um, you know, some areas where there's a little farming going on. And I mean, it's really beautiful. And I see this basketball court, you know, that's just out in a dirt lot. You know, the Filipinos, they love, uh, they love basketball. It's huge there. And I, you know, it was like, I'm kind of looking, I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is a, this is an intricate, interesting experience to say the least. So I keep walking down this little path and I pass this house and I hear, uh, I hear a guy, he's like doing some construction, working on his house. And, you know, he says hello to me, Mayan Buntag. And I say, ah, Mayan Buntag, sir. And again, he asked me, you know, what, what, are you, what are you doing, sir? Where are you going? I said, oh, I'm just exploring. And he said, and I said, is that okay? He says, oh, of course, it's cor- of course it's okay. Welcome, welcome. And uh, we chat for a minute. I didn't want to interrupt what he was doing. So I just asked him, I said, hey, is there a uh, little store or somewhere where I could, you know, buy a snack or something? He kind of points me in the direction that I'm going anyway. He says, oh, go there, go there. So I keep walking down this path. And I walk past uh, another house. And there's a gentleman sitting out there. And he says, hi, hello, hello, amigo. And he actually comes and greets me. And very nice guy. So I sit there. I'm talking with him for a minute. And um, he sees my feet are all muddy. And, you know, I took one of my slippers off. And I got kind of like a bloody foot, you know, from stepping on coral. And he, it, at this point, he's pretty concerned, you know. He says, oh, come, come here. Please uh, come up to my house and, you know, wash your feet off. And I'm like... I'm thinking, oh, thank you, Lord. Like, that's what I was really wanting to do is just find a place to just wash my feet off, get some of the uh, sand out of my shoes and, you know, make it a little bit more uh, pleasant to walk around. So I I go up to his house with him. His name is uh, Uga and a very, very nice guy. We sit there for a minute. And uh, he asked me what I was doing. I just said, hey, I, I really wanted to come out here and explore. And uh, he says, well, um, how, about, uh, how about I show you the island? And I said, really? Like, I, I don't want to take away from your day, sir. Like, he says, oh, no, 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 no problem. Like, let me, come with me, I'll show you the island. And I was like, wow. And again, I said, really is no problem like I I don't want to interrupt your day I don't don't you have things that you need to do and he says oh no no it's my pleasure my friend you're my friend you have my pleasure and I'm just thinking wow you know like it's really just blowing me away that somebody would just take their time out and just kind of be my tour guide so I'm like awesome you know like this is something I've been wanting to do for weeks now looking at this island from a distance every day and and today's the day and um and in my mind i'm thinking 
Um, you know, how the hell am I going to get back off of this island? I guess I really didn't plan it very well. I thought, well, if nothing else, I'll sleep out here and um, I'll walk back tomorrow. I mean, I know that the tide will go back out in another 12 hours um, or whatever. As soon as I'll either pay a fisherman to take me back across or I'll just wait till low tide and walk back across. I'll sleep under a coconut tree. Who cares? Um, <laughs> so I go with a uh, guy and he starts showing me around the, uh, the island. I'm like, wow, we're talking and getting along pretty well. His English is good. I mean, just super nice guy. And we, we walk past this elementary school. And we walk up on like a basketball court is connected to a small school. And these small children just start storming out of the, uh, the little courtyard. And some, I guess some were in a classroom and they saw me and him walking up and they just surround us. And they all dressed in like their little uniforms. I mean, they're really, you know, really proper and beautiful, you know, children. And, they uh, they just come out to greet us, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then they start grabbing Uga's hand and my hand and putting my hand and his hand to their foreheads. And I had heard about this. It's kind of a sign of respect that children do in the Philippines to elders. And I'll be honest, um, <laughs> It still kind of chokes me up thinking about this today because anytime it happens to me, and it happened many times in the Philippines, it just so much different than what we're used to in the USA. I mean, th these children really respect elders over there. And I'll be honest, I was a little choked up. I, I mean, it was a very touching moment for me. I was just like, wow, this this is amazing. And I didn't want to break out my GoPro and film. I know I could have, but I didn't want to be obtrusive to these people. I was like, you know, I want to be as low key as I can. Um, but that was a pretty amazing moment uh, for me. And the kids are just so happy. And I mean, they... You know, they probably don't see very many foreigners on that island at all. I know there's a couple that live there, but they don't live there full time. Um, so anyway, great experience there. And we keep walking along. We're walking along this path and there's no real roads on the island. They don't have cars or trikes. I mean, I think they get around on bicycles, but they don't they don't have any any uh there might be scooters that people have personally on the on the island but there's really no like roads um you know i guess what we were walking down was kind of like a main concrete path i mean it would be like a small road if if you could even call it that and there's a couple little sorry sorry stores little convenience stores and um you know, housing and just really beautiful. And then uh, I'm introduced to, I believe, the barangay captain's wife on the island. Very nice lady. I wish I could remember her name, but everyone's just super friendly to me. And so we keep walking along, and and again, there's not very many houses on this island. It's very, it's very small, and. Another interesting fact is that all the drinking water, all the bathing water has to be brought over. There are no wells on that island um, that I'm aware of. Um, Uga told me that all the water had to be brought over by boat and jugs. Um, another interesting thing about, about the island. So we keep walking along and we happen upon this cave he says i want to show you something and we walk up to this cave and i'm like wow this is incredible and from what i could see there's a staircase that goes down and it's probably like 30 feet down he's like come come with me i want to show you and i'm like wow this is this is absolutely amazing we get down into the lower part of the cave 
and I can see light coming through the other side and there's boats in here. It's a big place. I mean, it, it really threw me back. I was like, oh my goodness, I could see the shore. Like as we walked down in the cave, I could see the beach on the other side. Um, it's like it went underneath all this massive amount of rock and it was probably, wow, it was big. It's a big cave. It's probably 30, 40 meters or, or more, probably 60 meters. And then it opens up and you're on a beach. Um, and you see all the fishermen out there, all these boats. You're looking out um, on that side, you can see another little island, which is Pescador Island, um, which is supposed to be a great little diving spot also. And I'm just, I'm really just in awe, honestly, like looking at all this and just, I, I'm kind of trying to wrap my brain around what's going on and just this whole experience. I mean, it's really kind of touched me, you know? And how nice people are. Everyone's you know, saying hello to me and friendly. All the fishermen he's introducing me to. Everyone's just super friendly. I mean, it, it just, again, it just blows me away. So we keep walking along. He's showing me, you know, some of the things they're using for fish. And I'm asking him about, um, Uga is also a fisherman himself. And I'm asking him what type of fish they catch and He's telling me that a lot of these guys go out in these boats and there's a tuna run um, not too far from the island, but you have to get out there in a boat. And he even offers to take me out with him in his boat. He's like, yeah, someday come back and I'll take you, I'll take you fishing with me. And I'm like, wow, really? I'd love that. So I definitely plan on doing that at some point because Uga and I are still friends. We still talk on Messenger. I talk to him probably once a week. Um, I consider him a, a good friend. And so we're down in the little fishing area. I think they like, it's called Fisherman's Cove or something on that side of the island. We, um, we walk around, um, the island and just looking at the seashore there. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I look down at my feet and I'm seeing all these wonderful shells. Um, they're just incredible so I start picking up a couple of shells and um, he's watching me do this he's like I you know when we get back to my house I, ha I have a shell I want to uh, to show you and I'm thinking oh okay cool you know I mean they're really beautiful we keep going um, we're basically walking around the whole entire island we get to another section of the island um, where there's more boats more fishermen another pretty large house and it looks a lot different than uh the other houses on the island i said wow that's a you know it's a nice house he said yes a foreigner owns that house i think a guy from switzerland or something owns it he said but he's not here very often um and it's a really nice house beautiful and we uh, we kind of walk up this embankment back on the top part of the island off of the shore and just I'm just kind of in awe because just the beauty it's a beautiful day it's not really hot I'm just kind of just I feel like I'm in a dream uh, in a weird way because I had seen this island on the map for over a year and I don't know why just something was drawing me there. Something has always drawn me to Badjon. I, I, I can't explain it. It's just some a place I saw on the map and I just really wanted to go there. Um, and I'm here. I'm like, wow, you know, like it just all this has come to fruition. And so we walk back to Uga's house and super friendly guy. He brings me up to his house his wife comes out um, introduces herself to me um, just as we're sitting down his son uh, walks up to the house and he's carrying two big jerry can jugs of water they're probably five gallon jugs almost look like uh, fuel jugs you know fill of water and he says to me, would you like a coconut? And I said, oh, sure. 
Well, the next thing you know, I look, I look up and his son is climbing this pretty tall coconut tree, grabs a couple of coconuts, drops them down, chops one open for me. And oh my gosh, it is so delicious. Uh, fresh coconut juice, it just hit the spot. I'm just sitting there thinking, this is what an incredible experience this is. And, but in the back of my mind, I'm still kind of thinking, how oh, the hell am I going to get off this island? You know, am I going to be out here all day? I'm certainly not going to uh, impose myself on a family out here or something and say, hey, can I stay in your house tonight? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, and he asked me, or his wife asked me, um, where, did you, where did you come from? How did you get here? Are you staying on the resort? And I said, no, I, I walked. And again, her eyes looked like they got almost as big as saucers and she kind of laughed. She says, what, you, you walk here? And I said, yes, ma'am, I did. I walked across uh, during the low tide and <laughs> she's looking at me like I'm crazy. Uh, you know, I don't know, I'm probably not the only one that's ever done that but I don't think it happens very often. If there's foreigners that come to that island, they're coming on a boat. <laughs> they're not walking across. And so Aga asked me, well, uh, would you like me to take you back across in my fishing boat? And I said, wow, you, you would do that for me? He said, yes. He said, actually, I need to go across and take care of something um, today so you can go with me. And I'm thinking, wow, how incredible my luck is today. Like, I, I mean, talking about perfect timing. And I'm like, well, when did, uh, when did you need to go? He's like, when would you like? Would you like to go now? And I'm like, wow, oh, okay, you know, like, I don't want to impose on you. And he's like, no, no, we, we, we'll go. So we finish up the coconut. He splits it open. I eat the coconut meat. So good. Well, then he says, oh, I want to show you something. He goes inside his house and brings this shell out to me. And he says, this is for you. I said, what? He says, I want you to have this, you're my friend. And it's the most amazing shell that I've ever seen, that I've ever actually held in my hand. Um, and I said, where did you get this? He said, oh, I got it down at the shore where we were walking. I'm like, wow, I'm like, I can't, I can't accept this, it's too, too nice. He says, no, no, you must, you must. And in the Philippines, it's kind of, I've been told that it's, it's impolite. If someone offers you something like that as a gift, it's kind of impolite if you don't um, take it. So I, you know, I took it and I, it's one of my prized possessions. It's beautiful. And he says, if you drill a small hole in one end of it, you can actually use it to make sounds, like almost like a horn. And I'm like, I'm just thinking, wow, this is so cool, you know? And I said, well, if we go back across, will you please be my guest and let me take you uh, for lunch? He says, really? You would, you would do that? I said, of course. I will take your family if, if, uh, if they all want to go. He says, no, my wife has to stay here and my son's coming, but he has to go um, to uh -huh. his job. And I said, okay, well, please come with me as my guest and have lunch with me. So we go back across um, in his boat. His son takes us. And I mean, also just another wonderful experience going back across on this, you know, boat, um, this, his fishing boat. And I'm thinking, man, this is, I would have paid to just do this, you know, Th this alone is like going on a, on a, a tour, you know? And so we get back uh, across the other side and Uga and I go to one of my favorite places to eat, 
which is in the uh, Bajon market. It's called Stella Eatery. And uh, another wonderful friend of mine, it's a place that I love to go and eat. I would eat there almost every day. And so Uga and I have lunch together and he says, well, okay, my friend, um, I'm gonna go and run my errand. And, you know, we connected on Facebook and um, I said, well, can I please, uh, the whole time I was trying to offer money for the fuel, for the boat and pay them something to bring me back across and they would not accept it. And again, I said, please, let, let me give you some pesos for the fuel, you know, something for your family. He says, no, 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 you're my friend. I will not accept. And I, I was just, you know, just really touched. And I said, I remember a buddy of mine saying sometimes that, you know, sometimes if you offer a Filipino, you know, money like that, it can be a little bit tacky. So I thought, well, let me try another tack. I said, um, I said, my friend, um, I, you know, I want a piece of dessert bread from this bakery across the street, this wonderful little bakery. I said, please come with me, and, you know, have a banana bread or, or something uh, on, my, on me, my treat. So we did. And I said, please, uh, will you get some more items to take home for your wife and for your son? And he says, really? And I said, yes, please, uh, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. So he, uh, he chose, you know, some items from the bakery and I was kind of encouraging him to get more, you know, to take back to his family. And, you know, he did a little arm twisting on, on my end and he did and, um, you know, he was so happy, uh, gave me a big hug and, you know, we parted ways that day. and. Um, later, I ended up going to have a beer um, at a little bar that he worked at in Mobile. Um, I think it's called Happy Buddha, and he's a bartender there. But, you know, it just completely blows me away at the hospitality of the Filipino people. I have so many of these stories, things that would happen to me real similar to this almost every day. And I would just kind of put myself out there and I didn't try to impose on people, but I really wanted to get a, a feel of, of how it was being by myself in a rural area where, you know, anything could happen. I mean, you try something like that in this country, especially like walking on a school ground, you would have every agency uh, with a gun in your face. That's just the way it is in the USA. And I get it. It's a different vibe, a, a different world here. Um, but, I, you know, I'm just really blown away at how friendly these people are. And I can safely say that day changed my life. Like, it was that day that I really, once I took it all in, and was able to digest that experience along with the other ones that I had there. I just said, you know what? The Philippines is for me. It's, it's where I need to be. It's so less stressful than the life I live in the United States. And I just made up my mind that I would figure out a way. Um, you know, sometimes we don't always know how we're going to do something in the future. There's a, there's a saying that says something like, you know, driving with headlights, we can only see a small amount in front of us, but we keep going. And another quote that I was thinking about, and I've been doing a lot of reading lately, and it's, it's something, I think it came from John F. Kennedy, one of his speeches. It's something like, the rising tide raises all the boats. And I, I read that quote, um, and that's what, I guess that's, that's what I feel about the Filipino culture, is that their friendliness and their hospitality raises all the boats and, and just lifted me spiritually. So if you're still listening to this story, <laughs> It's a little long-winded, 
but I wanted to have it recorded. I, I, you know, I felt like when I get old, I want to be able to look back on some of these stories and, and things that I'm, I'm putting out there. But this was one that I really wanted to share. Um, so thanks for, uh, thanks for listening. And if you are thinking about the Philippines in the future, even on, as a vacation destination, I highly recommend it because it's just going to put you in a better mood. Thanks so much.